Save money, live better, only at Walmart. This one phrase known across the entire world by billions of people, and for myself growing up in Bentonville, Arkansas, the birthplace of Walmart, I was surrounded by this every day while growing up. But it seems that today the trend is to despise this corporation without any validation as to why one would harbor such feelings, which is why I stand before you today to unveil the truth of corporate America and to show you as to why you probably should be grateful for the monopoly that is Walmart. And to help us do that, we're going to analyze Walmart's charitable, social, and environmental contributions, as well as the common greed counterclaims associated with Walmart. So first, let's look at the charitable aspect. We live today in a world full of poverty, homelessness, starvation, hungry in our country alone. Hundreds of children go to bed starving every single night. Thousands of people are left on the streets homeless, begging for food and money from people like us, and yet we fail them. But luckily, someone else has stepped in to fill that gap, which is why Walmart has and is still known for its con a continuous con a contribution to charitable causes in two ways, with food donations and monetary donations. Now, in relation to food donations, Walmart has entire corporate initiatives in relation to hunger relief. In one year alone, Walmart was able to donate 571 million pounds of food. That equaled 369 million meals. Button writes in December, in Texas alone, Walmart donated 19.7 million meals to local food banks. And in relation to monetary donations, Having Post in 2013 writes that Walmart was named one of the top 10 largest charitable organizations in the entire United States with the Operation Help Front in 2015 that Walmart donated $2 million to directly support our veterans overseas and their families still here in America. And locally in our own town, the Springfield News Leader writes that in January, Walmart donated thousands of dollars worth of diapers to the Mothers of Need Initiative. Now, since the beginning of its creation with Sam Walton, Walmart has always placed a high importance on people, not only to help support them, but to help protect them, which is why Walmart has been known for its outright stance of rights and progressive movements. The most recent example being in relation to the support excuse me, of LGBTQA rights. Lane writes in April of this year that Walmart sent out numerous remarks showing its disapproval of new laws that allow for expanding discrimination against minority groups. In that same article, the CEO of Douglas Will is quoted saying, every day we see firsthand the benefits that diversity and inclusion have in our stores, our customers, our associates, and the communities that we serve in. Other corporations turn a blind eye to the social justice happening in the world today, casting out anyone of minority group to fend for themselves in a world that could care less, but Walmart embraces that. Identities, backgrounds, cultures, diversity, and celebrates that within their own corporation. Not only does Walmart try to protect people, but it also tries to protect the environment. Now, Boyden writes in, in February 2015 that Walmart is always looking for new ways to implement sustainable practices into its stores, into its corporation. He writes in February, Walmart just installed a new sustainable product shop, which will allow for customers to identify organic, eco-friendly, natural, and vegan products with ease. Now, NPR 2004 writes that Walmart is pretty much the creator and the leader in what they call green stores, which are stores accustomed with recycled materials, ceramic paints, solar panels, wind turbines, and eco-friendly materials. My mother herself works in construction for Walmart and firsthand testifies that in relation to, let's say, remodeling, they reuse everything. They strip down the old store and nothing goes to waste, but everything is reused and recycled. It's not to save what little money they can, but to help reduce the impact of the environment in whatever way they can. I want to take a second to look at some of the counterclaims that people often associate with Walmart. And the first is from the Walmart 1%.org in 2015 that writes that Walmart only gives out poverty jobs, leaving every single worker in poverty. Now, in Gazette, the Gotham Gazette 2011 agrees that the national or the average Walmart employee only earns $8.81, despite the fact that the United Nations labels living in poverty as making $2 or less a day. But regardless of that, people still have harsh beliefs toward this. But those same people often fail to not keep up with the news, as this is no longer the case. CNN writes in February that by the end of this month, Walmart is implementing a new initiative to raise all store associates from at least $9 an hour in the following February to $10 an hour. Now, the second argument to get Walmart is that Walmart is a job killer, shutting down local businesses. And this is outlined in the Journal of Economics of 2007 by Dr. Zhang and Dr. Nutel. And my response is that is absolutely true. But we must first understand the complexity of the situation to fully understand what's going on. So you have a local store, because it offers overpriced goods, it has a limited amount of profits, meaning on average, you can only ever be able to hire five local people. A single Walmart store hires hundreds of people. 
So yes, a Walmart store with feasible goods at a price range that anyone from any economic gain in class can engage in might mean that a local store loses some profits or goes out of business by getting five people compared to a couple hundred is a clear winner. And let's be honest, those five people will probably end up applying and working at Walmart. They will finally get access to full benefits, affordable pay, uh, retirement plan, health insurance, dental, things that they probably would never get at a local business store. And the third idea is the most extreme, and it's that Walmart is a byproduct of capitalism, is evil and should be shut down. Now this is a very extreme claim, but it's also a very common one amongst the younger generation, usually college students who are embracing the whole local store hipster trend, who fail to manifest any type of realization when expounding such extreme claims as the world being a better place if Walmart did not exist. So I want to indulge that. What would the world look like if Walmart no longer existed? USA Today writes in 2013 that Walmart directly employs worldwide 2.2 million people, not including third-party vendors, factories, suppliers, and other businesses who depend on Walmart buying and selling their products and depend on Walmart surviving, making the largest United States and Mexico employer. Now, for 2012, indulge my right though. And writes about what the world would look like if Walmart shut down and no longer existed. He concludes this worldwide economic chaos. On the verge of a global depression as 2.2 million people instantly unemployed. If you think the unemployment rate is bad right now, you wouldn't leave that for Walmart's so long, but that looks like it's 2.2 million people. No longer able to provide for themselves, their families, or their communities. If you think the job market is bad now, wait until 2.2 million people are added to that same pool. On top of that, the fact that the Walmart provides millions of dollars of revenue through taxes to the United States federal government, which now means the United States federal government is out of millions of dollars while also accommodating 2.2 million people who no longer have jobs. The life, as you know and love today, would no longer exist. That is until another company inevitably takes over Walmart's place, as there will always be a monopoly. That is the world we live in today. There will always be a superpower store. Defeating Walmart or getting rid of Walmart makes no uh, lasting change. So it's your choice to have the one that we have now, or to take the risk of having a company that does not have the same moral standards. So analyzing Walmart's charitable, social, and environmental contributions, as well as debunking the three common flaws associated with the company, looks to the only solution which is simple, which is shedding light on the fog created by anti-Walmart individuals. And just showing you as to why you probably should be grateful for the monopoly that is Walmart, because I will always be grateful for the monopoly that allowed my single mother with only a high school diploma the chance to provide for her seven children. And I will always be grateful for the company that is not turning the blind eye to social injustices, that understands that past law is always trying to correct them, and I will always be grateful for saving money and living better, only at Walmart.